Welcome back to our Epic Next.js course. This is the third section, part B, where we are going to work on our feature section. So we recently completed our hero section and now taking a look at my screen, we're going to focus on building out our feature section, which is going to be a wrapper component that's gonna have three feature items in there. And each feature item has an icon, a heading and a subheading. So let's start by first representing this data inside a Strapi admin panel before creating our feature section component to render this data in our Next.js application. So we're going to start in our Strapi dashboard. Let's navigate to our content type builder and we're going to navigate to create a new component. We are going to call it features section and it's going to live inside our layout. Let's click continue. We're going to have a text field of title, which is going to be short text. Let's click add another field. We're going to select the text field one more time. And we're going to say this is a description, which is going to be long text. And let's click create add another field. Taking a look at our features, we have an icon, heading, and subheading. So let's create a repeatable component to represent that data. Now let's scroll down and select the component. And we're going to call it feature. Let's add it to our components group and click configure the component. Let's call it feature and it's going to be a repeatable component because we have multiple features. Let's add our first field. We're going to start with text field. We're going to keep it at short text and it's going to be heading. Let's click add another field. Again, we'll select text. This time it's going to be long text and we're going to call it subheading. And finally, let's add another field and we're going to select our enumeration and we're going to call it icon and we're going to include the following icons, clock icon, check icon and cloud icon. This is what we're going to reference on our front end to tell our Next.js application which icon we want to render. And next, let's click finish. Here, now you could see our whole feature section. It consists of a title description and our feature, which is a repeatable component, consists of a heading, subheading, and an icon. Click Save. Now what we want to do is navigate to our home page and click Add Component. Here, we're going to use an existing component and let's add our Features section. Click Finish and Save. Now when you navigate to your Content Manager, let's close the Hero section and let's click the Add button. Now you see that we have our Features section component that we just created. Let's click on it and add some basic data. I'm going to say this is a features section and this is where our features live. Now let's go ahead and add a few features. I'm going to say save time and I'm just going to post some lorem ipsum and we're going to choose the clock icon. Let's click another entry. We're going to say this is going to be accurate summaries and let's our lorem ipsum and it's gonna be check icon. And finally, let's add another entry. We're going to say cloud powered, add our lorem ipsum and click our cloud icon. Now that we have all of our content for our feature section, go ahead, click save. We could now navigate to our settings, user permissions plugin on the roles, on the public, we could click on our homepage. We noticed that we already enabled our find permissions. And if we take a look here, we could see our endpoint. We could navigate to Strapi's query builder and we could add our query. We're going to say that we want to populate our blocks and it's inside each block. We want to populate our image, our links and features. If we take a look under our Strapi admin, under our homepage, here we have our blocks and here we see that we have our image, which is a relation. Here we see our links, which is a relation. And inside our features section, our feature is a relation. So we're specifically telling Strapi to populate those relations. Let's go ahead and copy this query string. So we could test out our endpoint using Insomnia. So here in Insomnia, I pasted our query string, click send. And here we could see that we're getting all our data. Not only are we getting our hero section data, but we're also getting our data for our feature section. Now that we know that our API works, let's go ahead and create our feature section component 
inside our Next.js application. Inside VS Code, navigate to our source app folder and select our page element. Here you could see that we already getting our initial data for our hero section, but now we wanna update this to get our feature section. Before we create the component, let's make sure we could get the data. So the first thing we wanna do inside our home query, we wanna add the populate for the feature and we wanna set it to populate true. And remember in the previous section, we created a function called get strap URL. Let's import it and use it. So import get, and when we navigate to get strappy data, instead of using base URL and hard coding it, let's use that function. Even though we don't have our feature section yet, when I refresh the app, it's gonna go ahead and make that call to our endpoint. When we take a look at response, we could see that we are getting our homepage as well as our feature section. So we know that our front end is getting the data, which includes all of our features. So now let's go ahead and add our component. Let's navigate to source folder, components, custom, and create a new file called features section SX. Let's navigate to build our features section data in Next.js in the blog post. The link is the link that you see in the description below. And here you see the starter code, but we're going to go ahead and paste the completed code. So let's navigate down. And here you could see updated feature component code. Go ahead and copy it. And let's go ahead, paste it inside our VS Code. Scrolling up to the top, we'll do a quick review. Get icon function checks the name of the function and based on the name matching that we get from our API request, it will render either the clock icon, the check icon, or the cloud icon. If we scroll down here, we're defining how our feature props look like using TypeScript. We're doing the same thing for our featured section props. And if we scroll farther down, we'll see that we are just mapping through our features and returning our data that is found inside our Strapi application. So now let's go ahead and navigate to page.tsx file, scroll to the bottom, and let's go ahead, import our feature section component. And we're going to pass our data from our blocks. Since it's the second item in our array, we're just going to use index of one. We're gonna update this in just a moment, but let's navigate to the front of our application and see if this works. Refreshing our application, we see that we're getting our features rendered from the data that's living in our Strapi app. Awesome. Now we have one more update we have to make. Taking a look at our Strapi application, currently we have hero section first, feature section next, but what if we have other sections? Maybe we have another feature section. How do we know which section to return and in what order? So what we're going to do is to create another function called block renderer to handle rendering the blocks in the order that we see them in Strapi. I'm gonna delete this here for now. Going back to our VS Code, let's scroll to the top and you could find the section in our blog post. We want this block renderer function. Let's go ahead and copy and let's paste it right after the query but right above the get strappy data. Taking a look at our response, notice we have this component variable and we have the layout that hero section. If you scroll down, we have our feature section that's defined by its name. And if we had additional sections, they will be defined by this component variable. So our block renderer will check which component name we have our now response and it will render the appropriate section in the appropriate order. So now let's scroll to the bottom and we're going to update this accordingly. First, let's delete these unused variables because we're not gonna use them in this case. Next, let's say if there is no blocks, we're gonna say no blocks found. Some people like the if statement inside the brackets. If it's just one liner, I typically like to do it this way. And finally, instead of returning our section separately, we're going to use our block. So we're going to say block.map. And for now, we're going to keep it as any and go ahead 
render the blocks based on the block that you're getting. So now if we take a look at our front end, nice, taking a look at our application, everything still works. What's cool now, if we go to our content manager and I go ahead and change the order and click save, and we refresh our front end, notice the order of our blocks changes automatically, which is pretty awesome. I'm gonna go ahead and change it back by moving it down and clicking save. Let's go back and check, perfect. Before we finish up the section, I wanna make one more easy refactor. Currently we have our homepage query on our page.tsx file, and we actually defining our getstrapy data function in the same file. Let's go ahead and refactor it a bit. I'm gonna go ahead and delete the getstrapy data function from here. And instead, we're going to go to our folders under source. We're gonna create a new folder called data. And inside data, we're gonna create a new file. We're going to call it loaders.ts. And this is where we're going to write all our functions that are responsible for loading data. Using our blog post as reference, in the section, let's do one more quick refactor. Go ahead and copy the following code. Let's import it inside our loaders.ts file. And basically what we have here is a function that we could reuse to fetch multiple items. We might wanna fetch our homepage, maybe we wanna fetch our notes or our summaries, we'll be able to reuse this function. Currently here for auth token null, cause eventually we're going to use our tokens. I just went ahead and set it to null and as a placeholder, but when we come back, some of our requests are going to be coming from our authorized users. So now what we could do, we could define a new function. We're going to say export a sync function and we're going to call it get home page data. It's not going to take any props. And here we're going to say const URL equals new URL. And this is going to take our path, which is going to be API homepage. And we're going to, for our second parameter, pass our base URL. Next, we're going to say URL.search and it's going to use our query string. And we're going to go ahead, pass our previous query inside here. And from our page.tsx file, we're going to go ahead, copy this populate. I'm going to delete this unnecessary code, delete this unnecessary import, and this QS import as well. And now inside our loaders, we're going to go ahead and paste that populate here. And finally, we're going to say return await fetch data and we're gonna pass our url.href, perfect. So now let's go ahead and import this get homepage data in our page.tsx file. So right above, let's do import get homepage data from our data loaders. And now instead of our using previous get strappy data, we're gonna go ahead and use our get homepage data and we no longer need to pass this because that's being defined in that function. Now go ahead and reload your front end and you should see that everything still works fine. But now we have a file where we could add additional loaders for anything where we wanna add additional data, which is a little bit nicer. And now let's move on and take a look how to create our header section and our footer section.